Hello, beautiful people. Before we move on with this review, I'd like to say thank you for all the support so far on this channel. We're just a little over one month into this, and we already have a little bit over 100 subscribers. To celebrate, I decided that I would pick up something more familiar to me and revisit a franchise that I actually enjoyed as a kid. Back when I was around 11 years old, I remember playing a lot of Turok 2 on the Nintendo 64. As much as I played it, I still can't remember beating it. Turok kind of became part of my childhood, but until this day, I still hadn't touched the first entry in the series. So while I was looking around, for the next game to cover on this channel. I was pretty excited to see Turok 1 at a whoopin' 5 bucks! Well, technically, today we're looking at Turok Dinosaur Hunter Remastered, released on Steam on December 17th, 2015, featuring slightly modified stages, 16x9 support, and better textures. The game opens up with a little opening animation, and it's... Beautiful. You can really feel the 1997 sink in. These character models really age like spoiled milk. Start a new game and you are dumped into the world of Turok. The game tells you that you need to find keys to activate portals to other stages. At this point, we only have one way to go, so off we go. Wait a minute, you're not a dinosaur! You know, for a game subtitled Dinosaur Hunter, there's a serious lack of dinosaur. You do run into three, maybe four types of dinosaurs, but that's pretty much it. Talk about false advertising. I wanted dinosaurs, goddammit! <laughs> The first stage is fairly straightforward. It's quite easy, easing you into the game. Enemies are few and far between, and you never feel overwhelmed, letting you get used to the weird shooting mechanic. You don't have to be very precise. The game will usually carry most of the weight for you, a mechanic carried over from the less accurate Nintendo 64 controls, I presume. There are six keys to find on the first stage, which is enough for you to unlock stage two and three. It gives you some options and allows you to start with the stage you prefer. It's nothing amazing, but it's always nice to have some options. Picking up a key always plays this silly animation and I fucking love it. He looks like he's about to take the biggest shit of all time, it's fucking great. Anyways, moving on to level 2. It's exactly the same thing. It looks the same, enemies are the same, map is different though. Okay. NEXT! Then comes stage 3. New enemies are introduced here, and that's when the game gets a little more difficult. Ammunition is not always sufficient, and you have to get by with whatever you have. Also, this is where the level design takes kind of a nosedive. In stage 3, I got lost. And lost and lost, and lost. I had to stop the recording here until I found my way through this stage. If there is one thing Turok suffers from, it's confusing level design. It's extremely easy to get lost. Areas tend to feel the same, everything links back together, so unless you took that specific turn at that specific place, you just go in circles forever. Once I finally found my way through and managed to pick up all the available keys, we finally meet our very first boss. This fight is fairly simple. Run, shoot car, Shoot car again. Shoot guy. Question mark? Profit. And with that, we have access to stage 4. Stage 4 introduces this brand new amazing mechanic called Bottomless Pits. Bottomless Pits have this wonderful ability to kill you instantly. It's great, believe me. Especially when you pair them with annoying first person platforming. This section can honestly suck elephant dick. Do I have anything to say about it? No. I just wanted to let everyone know that first person platforming with instant death can suck my dick. While going through stage 4, I got lost for quite some time. So since the game is called Dinosaur Hunter, I decided to become a man and fight a dinosaur to death with nothing but a knife. I win. So now we're a few hours into the game and we have four stages out of eight cleared. I will not cover every stage since they're all more of the same, just different maps. However, before I move on, I would also mention, fuck these guys. That's it. They suck. They're annoying. They're hard to hit. I'm not a very good shot, okay? At the end of the fifth stage, we meet a second boss. It's a giant mantis spitting poison. And it sometimes fly. It's dead now. To be honest, bosses in this game are pretty underwhelming. There are mostly damage sponges. They might kill you once or twice, but their HP doesn't reset when you die. All you have to do is go back a few times until it dies. You'll see what I mean when I get to the last few stages. Speaking of which, we'll go right to stage 8. Actually, wait. Is that a raptor with an arm cannon? Wait, 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 wait. I was okay with dinosaurs with back turrets, but this? What kind of world do we live in? I quit my job. I'm picking up drinking. Stage 8, the final showdown. We're on the final stretch and all the chances are on our side. We go through what appears to be an underground alien base. So far, the game has been throwing more and more enemies at us. And honestly, stage 8 is a lot of fun. Then at the end, you run into motherfucking Mecha T-Rex. <laughs> And he fucking sucks. I would even say he's the easiest boss in the game. How dare you, Iguana Entertainment? How dare you make a badass like this suck so much? 
How dare you? So after defeating Mika T-Rex, we go through a room to restock and we finally get to fight some alien dude, I guess. It's kind of lame if you ask me. If you've been gathering all the pieces of the Chrono Scepter, you can basically take a quarter of his life for every shot. I kind of wasted mine like an idiot, but I still tried the last one on him. Ouch. Side note, to get the Chrono Scepter, you need to find all the pieces. I was able to find most of them on my own, except one. In stage 7, the Chrono Scepter piece is hidden at the bottom of a pond, which is made of lava. You know, normally lava kills you. But you know, just to rock things. And now we defeat Skeletor? I still don't know who or what the fuck he is, so uh, yeah, we win? Question mark? On a final note, Turok is still a lot of fun. The action never stops, everything is extremely fast-paced, and other than a few frustrating elements, it still holds together pretty nicely even by today's standards. If you can get past annoying level design and underwhelming bosses, I would still recommend that game to anyone who asks. Except maybe not at full price. $22 seems a little overpriced for what you get. Also, fuck these guys.